Part 1. What is a PDE? A partial differential equation is a function containing partial derivatives of a multivariable function. Put simply, it is a function that depends on at least two variables along with their rates of change. You could, for instance, have a function that depends on the variables x and y. A simple partial differential equation may say that the sum of the components of the accelerations always equals zero. Part 2. PDE classification. PDEs are often classified into three types of equations, elliptic, parabolic, and hyperbolic. Elliptic equations often describe equilibrium problems. These problems are governed by equations that are like the example shown previously. For this type of problem, it is sufficient to specify the boundary conditions. An example is the steady state heat distribution along a rod. Imagine we have a 1D rod of length L with conductivity K and no internal heat generation. End 1 is held at T0 and end 2 is held at TL. This situation is governed by the following equation. In this case, the solution is a simple linear distribution with T at x equals 0 equal to T0 and T at x equals L equal to TL. The slope of the line is TL minus T0 divided by L. An important feature of the elliptic equations is that the change in the interior of the solution changes the solution everywhere. Because of this, the solution is smooth, it has no jumps or discontinuities. Parabolic and hyperbolic PDEs describe marching or propagation problems. These are typically unsteady, but under special conditions, such as supersonic flow, steady flows are described by these equations too. Parabolic equations describe problems with significant amounts of diffusion, or the net movement of something from areas of high to areas of low concentration. Parabolic equations require that the boundary conditions and initial conditions be specified. You can think of the initial conditions as a time-like boundary condition. Imagine a rod with both boundaries at a fixed t at x equals 0 and l of t equal to t0, and initial temperature distribution t of x at t equals 0. The following parabolic equation describes describes how the temperature distribution changes until some final t of x at t equals infinity is reached at equilibrium. If you plot the solution, you will notice that the temperature distribution exponentially decays until steady state. An important consequence of the time marching is that changes within the solution can only affect the solution at later points in time. Discontinuities can occur in initial conditions, but the diffusive nature of the equations makes the solution smooth. Hyperbolic equations typically describe time-dependent scenarios with little dissipation. These equations often describe vibration problems. The transverse displacement of a string under tension due to acoustic oscillations is governed by the following equation. C is the wave speed and Y is the displacement. These problems, like parabolic equations, require both initial and boundary conditions. The general solution to the fundamental mode for this equation is it can be seen that the starting amplitude, A, persists through the solution because there is no damping. Imagine the string was plucked in such a way that it resembled a triangle. The peak of this triangle constitutes a discontinuity in the solution. More worryingly, this peak can be represented by a combination of a series of sine waves using a Fourier transform. Thus the discontinuity would persist undiminished due to the absence of a dissipating me mechanism. This is a general feature of hyperbolic equations. Disturbances propagate at the wave speed c, so discontinuities can exist in time and space. Part 3. How do we classify PDEs? Imagine we have a general second order PDE. Assuming the coefficients are constant, how would you classify this equation? The classification of a PDE is governed by its highest order derivatives. In this case, we only need to consider the second order derivatives. The procedure for classification then simply involves searching for possible simple wave solutions. If a solution exists, then the equation is a hyperbolic PDE. To determine if a solution exists, we must compute the roots of the following equation. The existence of roots depends on the value of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. If this value is greater than zero, the equation is hyperbolic. If the value is equal to zero, the equation is parabolic. Finally, if the value is less than zero, the equation is elliptic. This procedure can be generalized to equations which rely on n variables. This will be covered in an upcoming video.